Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, November 19th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we're going to jump into our dashboard here to kick things off. Uh, the indices here on Tuesday finishing mixed. Dow Jones and S&P 500 in slightly negative territory. Russell 2000 and Q's slightly positive territory. Overall, for the past five trading sessions, we got uh, some green across the board. We are in positive territory. We're above all of those key simple moving averages uh, still. And if we scroll down and take a look at some sectors here, we got biotech, healthcare, utilities rounding out the top three here. These sectors have been changing guard pretty frequently over the past several weeks over these past couple of videos we've seen uh, just different uh, leadership up there and sort of a slightly different diverse group on the downside as well we have energy we have transports and materials in negative territory over the past five trading sessions in terms of major markets TLT getting a little bit of a boost here followed by silver and the 10-year uh, bonds on the downside, we have natural gas, we have oil, and we have the dollar all losing ground over the past five trading sessions. So let's jump into the charts here. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. We always like to start off with a weekly perspective just to get an idea of the big picture here. And you can see that we continue to uh, elevate to these new all-time highs. There is no overhead supply ever since breaking out uh, back in late October over early November for U.S. equity markets, we really haven't looked back. There's been no selling pressure uh, whatsoever, and uh, that continues to be the case as of right now. When we look here on the week, we're just slightly higher. Uh, we have put in a very narrow range over the past two trading sessions, but we're still well above, as we talked about in our last videos, we're still well above the breakout area here. Well, and when we put it into percentage terms, it's really not that far away. It's only about 3% below where we're currently trading, but that is where uh, a good sort of intermediate term line in the sand or short term really line in the sand can be placed um, the same behavior characteristics of this market it's kind of a broken record at this point the past you know five six video updates uh, we have the same sort of uh, disposition here is to say that market is in a rally mode we should expect that the market sort of uh, remains overbought here, but in the short term, we can easily have some type of rug pull, some check back, uh, keep the bulls honest, wa wash out some of that uh, frothy sentiment because we are, by arguably any sort of metric or oscillator right now, extended to the upside and sort of quote, overbought in the short term. So when we look at where the market has come from, the ground that it has covered over the past going on now, eight weeks in a row higher for the S&P 500, um, you know, we just have to keep in mind that if we were to kind of um, check back here or pull back or start to retrace some of these gains, that should be entirely expected, reasonable behavior for the market, given what it's done. Now, again, the flip side here is that People, traders are doubting the market, they're fighting the market, they're underinvested. We're going into a seasonally sort of bullish time for the market, end of year, holidays, lighter volume going to start to creep in here. And that this market, again, on the flip side, can just continue to levitate higher here and continue to force people to chase up and uh, effectively just uh, chase the market to the upside. So those are the two competing forces you have right now. Technically, market very strong here, uh, intermediate, long term, short term, anybody's guess could easily pull back. Uh, but right now, there's been no selling pressure to really speak of. When we look here at the VIX, we take a look at what that's been doing here. It's trading just uh, basically hovering at the year to date lows, just over 12 uh, for the VIX. It's got a little bit of a pop here today up 5%, uh, but still 
12.6 reading here for the VIX, quite low uh, historically. But again, when we think about where the market is and the ranges that the market is currently kind of putting in here, it does make sense where the VIX is trading uh, because those ranges are narrow. There's not a lot of fear priced in right here. Uh, that's kind of the landscape that we have. So S&P 500 continues to sort of defy gravity here. The chase is continues to be on. Uh, when and if there's some selling pressure, we can look at some of those recent levels. We talked about, of course, the 3,027 level, 3,030 area. That's the big breakout. Uh, if we start falling back below and filling, uh, say, last Friday's gap, that could be a very short-term level. If you're really tactical, acute, small, uh, shorter-term trader, uh, you could use this uh, 3,100, call it. If we start breaking below there, maybe that gives you a little bit of character change or something to work with uh, for for some selling um uh, for some selling action to come into this market. So uh, S&P 500, that's the look there. The Russell 2000, I think this is still the very interesting market to keep it to keep an eye on right now. Uh, we've talked about this here, same exact pattern that we've mentioned now for the past couple of weeks, but basically we had that bottom end of the range rally all the way to the top end of the range. It was a 10% move. We ran right into resistance, behaving technically exactly what you should expect or would want to expect. Uh, from a TA perspective, coming back into overhead supply. It stalled out. It didn't pull back really at all through through price. It has just been consolidating sideways through time, and it's starting to look uh, kind of fueled up and primed here to potentially make some type of move in the coming days or weeks. So the Russell here, I think, is very interesting. If it does get that rotation, if this turns into a continuation pattern above 160 and this starts to go, there's your excuse for the this melt up to continue as some of the small caps uh, start to maybe play catch up versus the S&P, the Qs, the big larger cap stocks that have basically dominated uh, the gains for the year. So Russell 2000, pay close attention there. Uh, I think they might be the key here to the next... Um, the next uh, sort of uh, you know uh, direction here for the market. Last but not least is the Nasdaq 100, looking very similar to the S&P 500. It's quite extended here, continues to work. There's been no selling pressure. Arguably is getting a little tired, long in the tooth, but still uh, finding that turning point, picking that top is going to be extremely difficult. Trend remains to the upside. So that is the overall equity market. Let's get into some other major markets. TLT getting a nice rally this week. This is trying to follow up the second week in a row now. Uh, remember, it turned around last week. It uh, had a nice two and a, a little over 2% rally last week. Now you can see it's it's trying to continue higher here, trying to break above the highs from uh, that first week of November, which was an ugly week for TLT. Uh, and it looks like, you know, when we, again, when we go to this daily chart now, we kind of undercut the low here, the pivot low from uh, mid-September with this recent uh, November um, push down to this 135 area. And then we quickly kind of reclaimed, popped back above it, and now we're kind of coming back into this bigger consolidation here. So short term, a little bit of momentum, TLT continuing higher there. Uh, when we look at gold, gold uh, kind of the same thing, but didn't quite have, I mean, you have this, uh, you know, again, the, the, the later September, almost October, low that was made here in gold. We did break below that. We're kind of popping back above it now. Um, so it doesn't quite have that same urgency look as, as maybe a TLT does, but uh, still gold, you know, kind of popping up here in the short term, trying to hold things together. Longer term, still in that consolidation pattern. And finally, silver, basically the same thing. Again, you had that October low pivot down here. Uh, we pushed above it. Then we came, we came kind of, um, you know, in, in silver's case, kind of crashing back below it. Uh, but then quickly, you know, buyers kind of reclaim that level and now it's starting to pop back up again. So all of these getting that similar look here, longer term consolidation still kind of under, you know, in, in progress, shorter term, some momentum for the bull for the bull case in gold, silver and TLT. If we bring our attention to energy, we take a look at USO here. We're starting to get, uh, particularly today, a little bit of some bearish behavior, a little increase in selling here. We got a 4.22% down week forming. It is, of course, only Tuesday. So there's plenty of time for this to um, find a bid down here. Really, if you look at the past couple of weeks, you know, we had some wide bar weeks that uh, we saw intra week sell offs start to reverse and close stronger. Uh, when we look here at USO, it's kind of just hanging on here. It's broken below the 
the past couple of weeks, we had this tight consolidation pattern in here that we're starting to um, lose here to the downside. So if the buyers can't step in here around this mid-11 area quickly, then it does seem like uh, this wants to roll over here, that, that this supply in here might eventually start being some forced sellers to bring this market lower. So USO, a uh, little bit of some bearish characteristics um, uh, developing there. And natural gas really got the early start on, on sort of the bear move because this started last week with this abrupt kind of higher volume. Actually, it wasn't that high volume, slightly above average, but still much lower than the two up weeks prior. Uh, but this started last week with a f with almost a 5% fall. Uh, it's continuing this now uh, to the downside, uh, uh, down 6% here on the week. So natural gas, um, you know, weakening up. Uh, the the uh, oil weakening up and you can see you know some of this is, is certainly tied to dollar strength and you can see here um, is the dollar is, is actually still dollar index anyway is still uh, down here on the week just slightly so um, that's that's sort of the uh, that's the roundup there for markets equity markets kind of continuing in the same pattern of November they're grinding higher um, you know long positions generally speaking are working and um, you know, some of that short term extension there is still just persisting. So that's what I got for the midweek recap. As always, thanks so much for tuning in and watching. Every Tuesday, we do these videos. You can subscribe on YouTube, follow us at The Trade Risk. We'll be back here tomorrow, intraday, with some trade ideas. Don't forget to check it out. Uh, be a couple hours before the market close uh, for some swing trade setups. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow.